In the day's other news, President Trump called for the world to act in concert to rein in North Korea. And he said again that military action is still an option. Meanwhile, the top U.S. military officer said there's no sign that North Korea is gearing up for war. But at a Senate hearing, Marine General Joseph Dunford, the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said that the North's missile threat is real. There are some technical elements of their program that haven't been fully tested, from a reentry vehicle to some of the ability to stabilize uh, a missile in flight. But, but I view all those as engineering solutions that will be developed over time. And frankly, I think we should assume today that North Korea has that capability and has the will to use that capability. We'll return to the war of words between North Korea and the U.S. right after the news summary. Senate Republican leaders threw in the towel today on the latest health care repeal effort. The Graham-Cassidy bill was pulled in the face of certain defeat. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the Senate is moving on, but that Republicans are not abandoning the idea of repeal. We haven't given up on changing the American health care system. Uh, we are not going to be able to do that this week. But it still lies ahead of us, and we haven't uh, given up on that. We do think it's time to turn to our twin priority, uh, reforming the tax code. The tax reform effort formally kicks off tomorrow when President Trump unveils proposals for a major overhaul. Republicans in Alabama voted today in a primary runoff for a U.S. Senate seat. Interim Senator Luther Strange campaigned with strong support from President Trump against challenger and former Alabama State Chief Justice Roy Moore. Meanwhile, Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee announced today that he will not run for reelection next year, making him the first sitting senator to do so. He's been at times openly critical of President Trump. There is word that the acting head of the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration, Chuck Rosenberg, is stepping down. The Washington Post reports that he will leave on October 1st. Rosenberg is a holdover from the Obama administration. He's been at odds with President Trump over treatment of criminal suspects and on other issues. In Iraq, the president of the Kurdish region claimed victory for supporters of independence in Monday's referendum. Kurds had celebrated through the night after early return showed overwhelming approval of breaking away from Iraq. Both Iraq and Turkey opposed the vote, and today Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, threatened to block Kurdish oil shipments. When we start imposing our sanctions, they'll be left in the lurch. It will be over when we close the oil taps. All revenues will vanish and they will not be able to find food when our trucks stop going to northern Iraq. Erdogan's government fears that this vote will embolden Turkish Kurds in their desire for autonomy. A Palestinian man shot and killed an Israeli policeman and two private guards near a West Bank settlement today. Police said the gunman opened fire with a handgun at close range before he was killed. In addition to the dead, a fourth guard was wounded. In Saudi Arabia, state-run TV has announced the end of a long standing government ban on women driving cars. The conservative Muslim kingdom was the only country in the world with such a policy. The new rule will not take effect until next June. Back in this country, health officials report a new record for three sexually transmitted diseases. The Centers for Disease Control said that there were more than two million new cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis last year. All three are treatable with antibiotics, but the number of cases has been rising for several years. And a quiet day on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 11 points to close at 22,284. The Nasdaq rose 9, and the S&P 500 added a fraction.